Got the perimeter of a rhombus being 40 feet. One diagonal measures 16 feet. So what would be the measure of our second diagonal? All right, so as we look at this problem, got a lot of things we want to underline with it here because things are going on in this problem. This is a geometry type situation and it's based on a friend called the rhombus. I'm going to draw a picture of that for you. I've actually drawn one. We'll get one for you up here in just a second. All right. First of all, we are dealing with a rhombus. A rhombus has got a lot of special stuff about it. It looks like the diamonds on your playing cards. All right. When you use those things, when you play oh, spades, hearts, whatever, um, poker, all those great games that you can do with those playing cards. But it looks like the diamond there, all right? But it's actually a rhombus. What goes on there? Well, we have all four sides that are congruent. They all have the same length. And there are some great things about the diagonals. One of those diagonals, it says, measures 16 feet. Now, what's going to happen there is we're going to need to know a little bit more about the diagonals of a rhombus, all right? And when we see a picture, it'll make it a little bit clearer, all right? And then we're going to go for the measure of the second diagonal. And the diagonals are not sides. They're those segments that kind of stretch across the middle. They more look like they form a cross. Well, we're going to find out how good they do, all right? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at that picture, all right? Let's see what we got here. There's a good-looking rhombus. As I said, all the sides are the same length. So we're going to put these little tick marks on here to signify they're all the same. Now you say, why is that important, Ernie? Well, it's because when we said the perimeter was 40, that means we're going to split this 40 up evenly among all four sides, all right? So that's an easy division. Folks, that's a real easy division. So we know we have 10 on each one. Now I have sometimes I give this problem to my students to work with it, and you know what? They forget and they put 40 on each side. That's not it. It says perimeter. Read, read, read carefully, all right? Now, what we're going to from here is talk about the diagonals here a little bit. You know, they look like, yeah, I, drew, I drew a good rhombus, by the way, in case you were wondering. That's a really good looking rhombus. And the reason I know that it's pretty good looking is because these diagonals are intersecting and they're making right angles all over the place, which means I've got right triangles built into this figure now, which all of a sudden becomes much easier for us to think about why did I get a length of the diagonal and why could I find something else? Another thing I want us to notice, these diagonals are cutting into each other. They're splitting each other. They are bisecting, we call it, bisecting each other. So they are the same length. Now I said one rhombus diagonal was 16. Well, you know what? If they split each other, that means those are going to be possibly two eighths. And the other ones, by the way, it's both of them. Diagonals of a rhombus, well, diagonals of any parallelogram. By the way, parallelograms can include rectangles, squares. This just happens to be a special idea of a parallelogram. So we've got these two with the three ticks. We've got these with a the one tick. They're all making out to be the same size, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick eight right here. I'm going to put the eight right here and the eight right here when they split each other. They divide each other in half. So we've now got 10 for the side of the rhombus, which also is your hypotenuse, if you'll notice, of one of these right triangles. In fact, you start looking at it real closely, you'll notice all of these right triangles are basically the same. They are congruent, all right? They're all the same shape, all the same size. They match side to side, angle to angle perfectly, all right? So what we've got to do is figure out what is the missing piece right here, this little tick mark, and you know what? We'll double the re-answer and we'll have it what we're looking for. So let's work that out. It's, it's Pythagorean theorem. It's right triangles, okay? So let's do it. Six, we got six squared. Well, we don't have six yet. I'm jumping the gun. How about that, folks? How about let's say eight squared plus, uh, we'll call it b squared because I don't know what it is, and that looks like a six, doesn't it? Equals to 10 squared. Now I want to tell you something. If you guys have know your geometry pretty well, you know it's called a triple and you've already spotted the answer, but let me work it out using Pythagorean theorem for those who need it, all right? And let's, since I've already given you the answer to it, we'll work through this pretty quickly, how about it? Eight squared is 64. And we got a B squared going on here, and we got 10 squared, which is 100. We're gonna lose the 64, we'll subtract. We will subtract, and we will end up with B squared on the left, 36 on the right, and yet it's going to be six, just like I promised you. That B almost looks like a six, doesn't it? That's what we worry about some of our letters, but be careful with it. And it's going to give us six. Now, that's not the complete answer. Remember I said this diagonal has been split. And look what we're going to have. Well, we're going to have six and we're going to have six. So what's the length of the diagonal? The diagonal is six plus six, which will give us 12. There is your final answer. For more math help, 
visit tnlearn.org.